G'day YouTube, 1MJ here and welcome back. Well, almost like clockwork, I did say I thought things were getting a little bit too hot and that there'd be a retracement and sure enough that's exactly what we've got. Now the retracements haven't been sort of too heavy but we've definitely seen a retracement. So we lost, I don't know, 30 million or more, probably a little bit more, I can't remember. I know it was over 1.5 trillion, how high it was I'm not exactly sure. And now I guess what we're all waiting to see is you know, will this go on further? Is this going to be something that'll last a couple of days, a couple of weeks, or is this going to be a 24-hour thing and then all of a sudden we bounce back higher? And look, I'm going to be honest, I don't really know. I suspect altcoins will probably continue to burn off a little bit. We might see them drop more, and I think Bitcoin and Ethereum will get ready to go on a run. I think that's my prediction anyway. Again, never financial advice. It's just my personal opinion. That's what I think might happen. But look, Bitcoin dominance still under 60%. ETH dominance has fallen though. That was 14%, getting up around 15%. So it means the altcoins are still really where people are putting their money. Now, Ethereum gas fees, they're at like 300. I think it was earlier today or late yesterday. So absolutely crazy. Again, people just trying to get into altcoins at the moment. That's where everyone was trying to get their money. And unfortunately for some of them, they may have got in at a bad time. But look, in saying that, yes, we can see a lot of red here. There's actually green, believe it or not. Not everything has dumped. So let's have a look. What's really pumped? All right, Bitcoin gold, of all things, up 30%. Energy Web Token, Kasama, uh, Flow Dapper Labs, Dash. So there we go. We've definitely had some things that have pumped. Not too bad, but look, mainly some pretty low kind of gains. Just kind of sideways for a lot of things. Now, dumps though. What were the biggest dumps in the top 100? That's what I like to focus on. So Elrond. I've wanted to get some Elrond, so I may be looking to build myself a position in Elrond sometime soon. Again, I've got to do a little bit more research, and I'll have to have a look at the charts to see where I think is a good buy-in point. But definitely looking at that. So Ontology, Near, Curve, Quantum. So we got some double-digit losses there. Now, nothing too bad. Again, you know, 20% is a little bit... Yeah, tough and same with 18%, 16% and 15%, but sort of 14, 13, 10, 11, 12% is not so bad. And especially, you know, for LISC, if you are up 100 and, you know, 14% and you've lost 14%, I don't think you're going to be too worried. But again, is this the start of a bigger correction for the altcoins? They really were, yeah, right up there. They were just pumping so hard and I just had a gut feeling... I don't think this can last for too much longer. But again, maybe this is just, uh, again, 24-hour correction before they continue to just pump massively. I'm not so sure about that, but it's something we have to consider. Again, I don't think that. I think altcoins are probably going to start to sell off for a while, and I think Bitcoin is getting ready to go on another run. But this could just be a bigger market correction as well. Who knows? Time is going to tell. But let's have a look at the Bitcoin chart, see if that's going to help us at all. All right, so as we can see for Bitcoin, nothing really sort of too major. We're still sort of traveling sideways, but we are in an upward trend. So this is the upward trend at the moment. Now, is it going to break that and roll over? Maybe, but you got to remember it's Monday night here in Australia. So it's just getting ready for Monday morning over in the States. So again, the CME and all the big you know, institutional buyers and that, they wake up very soon and it's really going to be dependent on them on what happens. Is this just going to be a little hiccup before more massive highs or maybe do we come down and at least retest the, you know, 50-day moving average or maybe we have a more brutal correction and come down and test the 100. I don't think we're going to come down and test the 200 at the moment. I think that's unlikely. But look, it's all possible and all something that would still be part of a healthy bull market. If we were to come down and uh, bounce off this 200 day moving average, again, that's completely healthy in a bull market. That's just a great buying opportunity. All right, now here is one of the reasons that I was getting a little bit concerned. Lindsay Lohan was, treating, was tweeting about Tron. Is it time to take profits? <laughs> That is one of the things I was thinking. It wasn't just Lindsay Lohan's tweet, though. I mean, Gene Simmons, Snoop Dogg, you know, Jay-Z's come out and he's done this Bitcoin thing. 
with uh, Jack Dorsey, there was so much going on. It's usually when you get that kind of hype, you're at the peak, or at least you're very close. So for me, again, I sold 10% of all my cryptocurrency, uh, not yesterday, the day before, and then the day before that. So I did it over two days, and it seems to have paid off at the moment. But it's not like I'm some Nostradamus and I knew it was coming. It was just a gut feeling, again, having been through the markets. But I have been wrong before, so please don't get me wrong. I'm not trying to toot my own horn and go, yeah, I knew it was coming. It was just a feeling I had. I wasn't 100% sure. If I was 100% sure, I would have sold a whole lot more, but 10% was enough for me. I've got some cash on the side, and now I'm just waiting to see, do we bottom out somewhere, or is this literally going to be like a bounce where it just bounces and comes straight back up? I guess we're going to find out tomorrow or later today for you know people over in the States. I'm getting ready to go to sleep. So yeah, these kind of things, when you start to hear lots of celebrities and just people all over the place, you know, getting really pumped up. And again, altcoins that are just, you know, going up 400% in a matter of, you know, sort of a week or two weeks, you're probably pretty close to a top, whether it's the ultimate top or just the kind of top for this, you know, part of the bull run. That's what you've got to work out for yourself. All right. So something interesting, there has been a lot of talk about, you know, all the institutions coming into Bitcoin and things like that. And here's an interesting story that says institutional adoption underscores urgency of clear crypto rules, says Hester Pierce. So crypto mum, that's a little bit interesting. She's usually, you know, an avid promoter of Bitcoin. And look, she still is and she's right into crypto. But obviously they think that there's, well not think, they can see areas, I guess, that still need some more regulation. Hopefully they don't go too strict and over-regulate and just really stifle it. But I'm sure there are areas that need some more regulation. So as institutions move into the cryptocurrency space, the need for clear rules regarding digital assets is critical, an official at the Securities and Exchange Commission said. SEC Commissioner Hester Pierce believes that clear cryptocurrency rules are needed now more than ever due to firms like Tesla and MasterCard actively embracing the alternative asset. Yeah, I'm not, I don't know if them embracing it means we need clearer rules. I would have thought we should have already had clearer rules. How does big business getting into it mean we need clearer rules? All they do is generally manipulate these clearer rules or the rules are put in place to assist them. So yeah, I'm not sure how I feel about this at the moment. I am slightly concerned. And there's a follow-up story that, again, keeps me concerned. So over here. So US government won't allow corporate corporates or corporations to keep replacing dollars with Bitcoin warns investment advisor. And this is a little bit concerning. So Dan Nathan, the founder of Risk Reversal Advisors, says that the US government will not keep allowing corporations like Elon Musk's Tesla to replace dollars with Bitcoin. They won't let the dollar fall away from being the reserve currency of the world, which could happen if corporations keep replacing dollars in their balance sheets with Bitcoin. This is a little bit of FUD because they haven't put all their cash into Bitcoin. They put a percentage, and it was only a small percentage. It's not like they've thrown all their cash. If you're telling me that Tesla's Tesla's only got $1.5 billion in cash, you've got to be kidding me. I'm sure they've got a whole lot more. They allocated a percentage. It's the same as MicroStrategy. They haven't put all their cash into Bitcoin. They have allocated probably a large portion to it, but not all of it. They still need cash and they know they need cash. So there's a bit of FUD in that, that you know, all of a sudden no one will be using the dollar anymore. The dollar's not going to go away just like that. It's just not going to be the only reserve currency anymore. And it can't be. No one wants to use a dollar that just keeps getting printed into infinity and becomes worth less and less and less. So there's nothing they can do about the dollar losing some ground on things like Bitcoin and just other cryptocurrencies. Unless they change the dollar where there's a fixed amount and there is no more, then it basically becomes like Bitcoin. But that's not going to happen. So a bit of FUD there, but some truth to it as well. So the US Treasury and the US government will not let this thing get out of hand where literally corporates, corporate, corporates, are starting to replace dollar to a large extent with Bitcoin. Again, it's not a large extent, it's just an allocation and it's generally maybe 5%. So they've still got 95% of their wealth, you know, locked up in cash and other things. It's just 
a percentage of their cash that they are putting into Bitcoin. And it's not large amounts because they just couldn't handle the fluctuating price. Or at least they can handle it on the way up, but they couldn't handle it on the way down. When asked specifically what the regulators could do to stop corporations from putting Bitcoin in their balance sheets, as Tesla did, Nathan exclaimed, they can regulate the hell out of it. That's what they can do. Yes and no. Again, we go back to here. So yes, they want clearer rules. And again, she, Hester Pierce is going to have been given the tap on the shoulder and said, we need to slow this Bitcoin thing down. But they're not going to regulate the hell out of it because then there's no money. Then the system stays the way it is. And everyone, including the bank system, knows that this system is broken. It's not going to work. They cannot fix it. It is only going to get worse. They're not suddenly going to rein in interest rates and then 10 years later, everything's fixed and we're back to normal. The fiat system doesn't work. Something new has to come. Fiat's not simply going to die, but it just it can't be a world reserve asset anymore. It can be a way of transacting stuff, sure, but it can't be the reserve currency of the world by itself anymore. Yeah, there is going to be a basket, and I believe Bitcoin will probably pay a part of that. Whether it's going to do that in the kind of very near future, like the next you know, two to five years, probably not. But I think in the next five to 10 years, that's exactly what Bitcoin will be. It'll be part of that basket. And look, I could be wrong. Maybe it becomes part of the basket in the very near future. I guess, again, time will tell. All right, last story. So this is about Doge. So Elon Musk wants large Dogecoin holders to sell their Doge. Tesla CEO Elon Musk said today that he would support the top holders of Dogecoin selling a big portion of their Doge stash to ease out the altcoin's distribution as per a tweet this morning. Whether that is a joke or not, Dogecoin's wealth concentration issue is real. Reports suggest that a single entity holds over 27% of the altcoin's entire market cap, valued at over $7 billion at press time. So that's basically, let's say a third of $7 billion, that's about $2 billion worth of Dogecoin one person owns. That puts the entity's holdings at over $1.8 billion, or about the GDP of a mid-sized island nation as of today. So this is concerning for Doge holders. And again, you know, I'm not saying this person or, you know, whoever it is, it might be a conglomerate that own that coin, are simply out to just dump on everyone. But unfortunately, that's probably what will happen. And yeah, unfortunately, it's everyday Joes, you know, like myself and other and the rest of you probably watching this video that end up getting dumped on and lose a lot of money. Well, hopefully not me. I'm hoping not to lose uh, any money this time around. But, you know, again, I understand the cycle. So while I may lose some money in the short term over, you know, say three years, if this is the correction and I wasn't ready for it, and we go into a bear market, I'm pretty confident holding for four or five years time, uh, I'll be back in profit. So again, we'll just have to wait and see. I'm not an oracle, I'm not a savant, I don't know exactly what's gonna happen, when it's gonna happen and how it's gonna happen. I just have gut feelings and it's always based on previous experience and gut feelings, probably not the word, just some instincts going on. Again, based on my time in the markets, having seen what's happened. So anyway, I'd love to know your thoughts down below. Are you concerned by you know, one entity having basically a third of all the Doge coins out there. That is quite centralized and quite worrying for those who are invested in Doge coin. But look, people are still gonna buy it. It's going mad on TikTok and again Elon Musk promotes it as well himself. So buyer be warned. If you don't know this then you know hopefully you're watching my video and you understand. Uh, and again, for me, I'd just be very, very careful in coins that are so centralized. But look, in saying that, a lot of the coins and projects that come out initially are quite centralized. They have VCs who back them and then teams. And so there might be, you know, sort of 10 different wallets that hold, you know, 50% or more of all the coins. But, you know, that's not as bad as one person holding 30% of all the coins. That is a little bit worrying. All right, I'm not going to take up too much more of your time. It is late here. I've got to get ready to go to bed and get up for work in the morning. That's the life I live. It's work and it's crypto. Hopefully one day I can simply make my work crypto, but I'm not quite there at the moment. All right, stay safe. Be kind to one another. There were gains out there, so good on you if you're on the gain train. If not, oh well, you can't win them all every day. I'm sure the gains will come back, and I'll see you next time.